Okay, um, welcome to um, webinar number two. Um, we're, we're glad to have um, all of you who are in attendance and today, I just want to get started. I'm going to introduce Dave Maurer um, with, uh, I still call it CPI, microfiber. Um, Good morning, Dave everyone. The, yeah, Dave is the CEO. Um, he's going to be the one presenting today. I also want to make mention um, that we have um, Tiffany, is it Tiffany's last name Brady? Yes. Tiffany Brady, um, she's also with iTeam Microfiber. Um, she's listening in, but we can pull her up. She spent 20 years in the healthcare industry, was actually over EVS for four hospitals in her last job. So a great resource for those of you who are in healthcare on this webinar. So if you do have questions specific to healthcare, um, please type them in. Um, so I just want to kind of give that as a little bit of background, but we're going to get started here. We have this little pull up what um, this poll um, and I'm going to go ahead and end the polling. We've had several people uh, poll and I'm going to share the results. Hopefully you guys see it on the screen. Do you guys see the results? Have yes, I do. Is that showing up for you, Dave? Yes, it is. Okay. So um, I think this is interesting. Um, of the 18 that actually that filled in this poll, most people are doing visual inspection, which is what I would expect. Um, yeah. and, and we have a few, we have one using black light, someone using ATP, and then there's a few that says, hey, we just don't really check on our cleaning process. Um, so I appreciate that honesty. Um, and that's something that we wanna talk about today and, and Dave will be talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you, Dave. As you get going, I'll, um, just if I have questions, I, will, I might just unmute myself and, and ask a question about what you're talking about. If any of you viewers have questions, um, go ahead and um, type them in. Um, so, all right, you shouldn't see that poll anymore. Is that yep. right, Dave? Okay. Yep. I, uh, I uh, minimized it, so it's, it's gone, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna let you take it away. Thanks for being with us, Dave, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for everyone uh, joining in these uh, a little bit awkward times for everyone. And I, I know it's uh, a little bit different uh, training. We like to do these things hands on. Um, but of course, uh, we're making do with technology today. So again, thank you. Um, so today we're going to talk about microfiber, um, how it's used, why you use it. Um, it's obviously been around for a long time now. Um, so one of the biggest questions that comes up in microfiber is what's the difference between cotton and microfiber? Um, there obviously is a big difference and there's a lot of different types of microfiber. Uh, the easiest way to explain the difference of uh, microfiber and cotton is cotton absorbs uh, liquid and uh, soils, bacteria, and so forth into the fiber, um, where microfiber does not. Microfiber is a plastic. Uh, material. Uh, so it can't absorb into the fiber. Uh, the easiest uh, analogy I always use is a golf shirt or just uh, outside doing yard work and you used to wear a, a cotton t-shirt and you're outside sweating and that sweat was very difficult to get out of that shirt. You can hang it up and you can put it in the uh, dirty clothes and it's still wet and has sweat on it. Um, not that that's a good picture to, <laughs> to see, but that was reality with a cotton shirt. And if you were outside with that shirt all day, it didn't dry. Um, it stayed wet. Uh, where today most uh, shirts are, are made of a, a microfiber material, and especially golf shirts, as Nike has named theirs, the dry fit. Um, for good reasons, because the shirt stays dry as you walk outside and the breeze blows. Um, because your sweat is on the outside of the fiber, um, it dries itself out and does not hold uh, the liquid inside of the fiber. It's essentially wicking on the outside. So th there's a huge difference in the cleaning world um, because you know we've all seen the rotten cotton mop, as uh, many <laughs> of us call it, and that thing's sitting in the corner and it starts to smell. Um, that's because it has bacteria in it and it's absorbed into the fiber. And uh, we, we've all seen and heard about uh, bacteria growing and creates a smell. Um, that's what we're trying to get rid of. And in today's age, as infection has become at the forefront of our world, of the cleaning professionals, um, it's really become more 
uh, to light of exactly what are infections, bacterias, how they're passed. Um, and, and we play a big part in that because we don't want to spread bacteria around. Uh, we want to obviously remove it. And we'll get into a little bit about that, of how we do that uh, with microfiber and the cleaning agents that you're using. So um, this piece that I'm going to run through, we're not going to go through every single slide. Um, Clint will make this available to you guys. So uh, you're, you're welcome to uh, look at all the slides, of course, and, and read these in details. These won't be on the quiz later, so don't worry about reading all these bullets. <laughs> um, but this is a piece just about viruses. Again, just explaining a little bit about the history of what's gone, gone on with uh, coronaviruses, which you know we all call this corona, but there are many versions of it, of SARS and MERS and now COVID-19. Um, so we're still, you know, the biologists and the, the people much smarter than me are trying to figure out what this is. Um, which makes it a little bit more difficult for us in the cleaning world. How do we clean it? You know, and it's why we're all isolated trying to uh, stop the spread of it. But of course, <clears throat> all of you are in the front line doing cleaning and especially in healthcare that are obviously open right now. Um, it's very important how we clean and how we're treating the bacteria. Um, so it's a very critical thing of knowing, and that's what we're trying to educate you today on, is knowing a little bit behind the scenes, uh, what's bacteria all about, uh, what am I doing with it, and what are the precautions I can take to get rid of it um, in, in your facilities. Um, so this page talks about cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing, and what's related to those three things. Uh, in the cleaning world, a lot of times, the general public thinks you wipe over something, it's clean, everything's perfect, and all the bad stuff's gone. And I say bad stuff, you know, I'll just include that with bacteria, germs, uh, funguses, you know, all of the things that grow that we can't see with our uh, naked eye. Um, those are things that we want to get rid of. Um, so when we're cleaning, uh, we're really taking the surface and removing uh, heavy soil. Um, depending on the agent that we're using, um, if we get into using a disinfectant, so that is disinfecting. But cleaning, we're removing what we can see is the easiest explanation. Um, and that's an important step because that also helps disinfectant work better. Um, if we don't clean first and we just put disinfectant down, um, some of the soils can be covering up bacteria, which is not then going to kill the bacteria. Uh, so the cleaning is still a very important step in our process. And just spraying something with a disinfectant um, is not going to kill everything unless we take away all the, the bad stuff first. Okay, and so when I talk about bad stuff, I'll generalize, and, and that's going to include soils and all the, the germs that we're trying to get out the, the major stuff in these pores. And a lot of the, the time we don't know how porous the surface is. We look at a, a flat surface and think that's very um, straight, a mirror, you know, there's not many pores in that. Uh, a countertop, there's not many pores, but in reality, they're very porous. Um, and that gets into sanitizing. Uh, when we sanitize a surface, you're using uh, some type of agents um, to clean, and they generally are cleaning at 99.9% of log reduction. Um, and to take a little bit of a sidebar in, in uh, log reduction, um, you'll see on bottles 99.9, .9, like Clorox wipes, um, cleans at 99.9%. And then you get into disinfectants and you start adding digits, 99.99, 99.999. And sometimes people look at that as that's not a big deal. What's the difference of 0.9 and 0.99? Um, in our world, it's a huge difference uh, because it's the amount of bacteria that's being um, removed or killed. Um, so sanitizing, uh, we're removing, generally speaking, 99.9. And um, you're using a cleaning agent with, uh, or a, I'm sorry, a cleaning solution um, with a, a cleaning product such as microfiber. Um, sanitizing is typically in the food industry um, and is controlled by the FDA for food. 
um, gets into the EPA registered products um, for some items, but that's where you start getting into disinfecting. And so when we talk about disinfecting, uh, first you, you need to use a disinfectant um, that's EPA registered, and you need to abide by what's on the label to disinfect. And, and the key point in disinfecting is dwell time. And we've all heard that term and seen it. Um, we don't always abide by it. And it's not the cleaner's fault. Uh, a lot of time it's just uh, the airflow in the facility. Uh, we don't have the, the product wet enough to allow dwell time. Um, but generally speaking, dwell time is between, between five and 10 minutes. And there, there are some less than five minutes, but again, generalizing, because I know people use a lot of different products. Um, but dwell time is very critical because uh, if you don't get the proper dwell time that's on the label of your product, you're not killing all the bacteria. So if you put a disinfectant down with microfiber and you're, you're cleaning a countertop, let's say, and the label says a dwell time of five minutes, um, you're going to kill, if the label is 99.99% at five minutes, that's how much of the bacteria you're going to kill in five minutes. If the disinfectant dries in one minute, um, you're not killing that percentage. Um, a lot of people ask, well, how much am I killing? <laughs> um, that's where you got to get into biology <laughs> uh, to see how much you really are. But the important thing is to remain, to have the surface remain wet um, for that amount of time. So that's something that as a cleaner um, that everyone figures out. I have to leave my product this, this wet in order to achieve that dwell time. So um, disinfecting in today's world, you know, is very critical um, because we're trying to kill bacteria uh, to prevent it from spreading. And because we don't know exactly what COVID-19, how it's spreading, you know, of course we know it goes through the air and touch points and through saliva and stuff like that. But as you're in a facility and we have all of these touch points, and we don't know who's touched them with or without a, a virus, whether it's COVID-19 or another virus, um, we want to make sure that bacteria is killed because if it's not, it multiplies very quickly. And, and that's the problem of bacteria is the more bacteria that's present, it, it doubles. Every 20 minutes, bacteria is doubling um, and grows into millions of spores that again, we can't see with our naked eye. Um, so we're reliant on an invisible product, the dis disinfectant at this point, um, to do the work for us. Um, so if I go backwards of disinfectant, sanitizing, cleaning, the cleaning part's very important uh, because we're removing the soil, we're removing what's on the surface, um, and the disinfectant is leaving behind an agent to kill the bacteria. Okay, so that, that is really a critical thing in today's age. Um, Again, it's come to the forefront because of what we're living through in these viruses. Okay, so that's the piece on uh, cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, just to give you a little bit of background of why you guys do what you do. Um, it, it's, I think, a, a shame it's taken so long for people to appreciate what the cleaning industry does. Um, but uh, what all of you are doing today is uh, obviously very critical, and it's great that people are realizing that now. Um, but this is also why we wanted to explain to you the uh, behind the scenes things of what's actually working uh, to do the cleaning and killing of bacteria. Okay. Um, so this is something you can read uh, late at night and really this is on the quiz. So <laughs> this is log reduction, but this is what I talked about um, in, I'll just blow this up so you can just see these percentages here of 99.9 .9 all the way down to 99.9999, um, which is the best log reduction. Um, that's typically used in healthcare, uh, required in healthcare. Um, but at the end of the day, you're left with one bacteria, and that's at the lower right here in this table, um, where if you're at 99.9, .9, you're left with 10,000 pieces of bacteria, okay? So that's a huge difference when you look at bacteria is doubling every 20 minutes on, on average. Um, that bacteria multiplies and, and doubles. And so in one 
day, you can imagine how much bacteria has grown uh, because someone has left, left behind, okay? So again, that, that gets uh, very in-depth, but you can read through that. I think this is some great illustrations here, just showing you, illustrating uh, what that's all about. Um, so about cleaning okay. and, yes. One, one thing that um, I just, I, I've reviewed these slides and if you go back that one slide, I think is really great, um, is that little picture down at the bottom right. Can you just explain that real briefly? Yeah, um, maybe. <laughs> Try and do that without going to the next page here. All right, so um, these two pictures at the bottom is a picture before and after of bacteria. So this is taken in a lab, um, bacteria that's, that's grown, and this is a, a standardized test that, that is shown there. But the left picture is showing uh, bacteria growing, and this is on a stainless steel or a vinyl surface. Um, and if you take under a microscope on your vinyl countertop, this is what it looks like before you put disinfectant onto the surface um, or remove the bacteria in some way. The picture on the right is after using microfiber. So we wiped over the bacteria once uh, with our microfiber cloth, and that's what the uh, bacteria looks like afterwards. It's removed. Um, so we've removed 99.9% .9 with that, one swipe of is, just microfiber. Is that just microfiber and water or just microfiber or? Explain just it. microfiber alone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that shows what microfiber does. I think it's a great illustration. Yeah. No, that, and thanks for going back to that because that, that is a great illustration. Um, you can remove 99.9 .9 and you can see with this, you're like, oh, I don't see any bacteria. If we exploded that another hundred times, you would see particles still there um, that you can't see, you know, in with your naked eye in in this view. But it's a huge difference from the slide on the left. Right. That's where we started. Right. So, so the critical piece here is we talk about you got to clean, but you also got to disinfect, and the two go in tandem. So I just want to point that out. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. No, that that's great. So when we're cleaning and we look at in today's age, we don't want to spread bacteria and we don't know where bacteria is left um, behind in the building as people are walking through the building. Um, it's very critical that we're hitting all the touch points. Um, so this is just a quick illustration of where people have been from sinks to countertops um, to switch plates, doorknobs, um, critical points in a room that we know that are being touched. You know, if we're in a bathroom, you see a few illustrations here of dispensers. Um, if we're in a, a classroom or a patient room, uh, we're hitting the railings where they're touching, uh, leaving the room. Um, a lot of this is, I say, is common sense. You just think about where people are coming in and going out and where they're gonna touch and where you think bacteria can be landing from airborne particles. Um, we like to talk about four-dimensional cleaning to make sure we're cleaning vertical surfaces, horizontal surfaces, and things hanging in the air, which, which may be um, railings or lights or fans. Um, but that's going to help keep airborne particles down. That's the fourth dimension that things we can't see as people are breathing, coughing, spitting, uh, however stuff is coming out of people's uh, bodies that's becoming air, airborne. Um, so as we're all trying to protect more bacteria from spreading and these viruses uh, from spreading, um, the touch points are critical because every time someone touches it, it becomes airborne again and has an opportunity for somebody to inhale that and, and breathe it in, um, but also go on another surface and again, grow as bacteria. Um, so. Uh, very critical that we're removing these um, the, the uh, touch points um, in a facility. Okay, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about microfiber, and I mentioned earlier about microfiber versus cotton. And the the key piece is microfiber is split, and when we look at microfiber 
in clothing, it's not split. When you feel a microfiber cloth, it has a lot of uh, prickly feeling uh, things in it. Um, those are split fibers. Um, if you're wearing a golf shirt that's microfiber, they're not split fibers, um, but they are still plastic. Um, and again, the liquid sits on the outside of that fiber. Um, in the cleaning world, we split that. And the reason that we split it is we want it to pick up uh, soils, germs, bacteria, and hold more liquid. Um, so everyone's probably seen these illustrations that it looks like a star kind of blown up. Um, that's a picture of one fiber um, that is split. And the splits are all the, the air pockets, if you will, between the little triangles. And there are a million of these fibers in a one square inch piece of uh, microfiber. Um, the key to what we do in our fiber um, that you guys are getting from uh, uh, Clint is it's triple split. So the more splits you have, the more material that can hold and the more bacteria it's removing because you have more of these split uh, materials picking out of the pores like we talked about earlier. We're cleaning surfaces that are very porous and that's where the bacteria is. We can't see that with our naked eye. So you know, very critical that we're using the right type of product um, to do that. Um, and as we're using the, the product, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but this goes back to the poll question of how are we measuring clean? And we know in the, the professional world, it's, it's very difficult to measure clean. And most people, like the poll said, do it visually. And you look at the floor and you're like, looks clean to me. And in the general uh, public, you can look at a lot of poles. And it used to be, it's changed a little bit because of the floor finish kind of going away and going to more natural surfaces. But if you walked in a facility and had a glossy floor, our perception was that the facility was clean. And we had no idea if there's bacteria on the floor or what the walls look like, or these touch points that we just talked about, if they're clean or not. But the the human perception from polls across the country tell us this. Um, so you guys are not alone in how you're doing it. Um, it's how the world really is visualizing clean. But we're trying to change that through providing different science and cleaning and measuring results. So this is showing an ATP meter, uh, which an ATP meter uh, uses a swab like in this picture. And you take that swab and it, it has a liquid on it and you rub it across the surface, in this case, a faucet, and you put it in this little uh, black device. And that device is measuring the amount of, I'll say bacteria, it's measuring other things on there, but um, without getting into too much detail, um, it's measuring the level of bacteria that are uh, present uh, that you picked up on that swab. Um, and it's giving you a number. So that device is going to say your number is 100. And as we look at that number, we want to make sure that we reduce it and then maintain it. So it's not necessarily what your number is compared to mine, compared to Clint's hospital, compared to somebody else's. It really is maintaining your cleaning level. Um, so as you use these scientific devices and you get numbers, you want to reduce it to an acceptable level, uh, but then keep it there. And that's how you can really maintain your cleaning levels um, and throughout your facility can really understand that I have good, good cleaning practices. And we all know these change if it rains, it snows and different environmental things change that. Obviously we're in a situation now where we have a lot more bacteria uh, present that we're trying to remove. Um, so by measuring the results, it gives your facility a great opportunity to have a good maintained level of cleanliness. Okay, so um, ATC. Real quick, Dave. All right. Um, just, just some thoughts. As we come out of COVID-19 and businesses go back, um, non-essential businesses go back, and even as... Um, I think this is a critical piece. So I just want to mention that because us, the consumer, our, our, our expectations have changed, I think, after this. It used to be exactly, we all like, hey, this place looks clean. You know, when you go into a restaurant and um, you go in the bathroom, it's, it's nasty. You say, hey, this place is bad, right? 
well, I think everything's changed. And I think this is one of the game changers as, as, um, as I'm talking to the audience here, this is something to really strongly consider because it's something that you can document and, and you can provide that documentation to, to customers, to stakeholders, to whoever it is. So I just mentioned that because I do think this is, this kind of stuff is, is critical. So I just wanted to throw in my little addition to what you've already said, Dave. I know, and it's a great point. I mean, ATP meters have been around for a long time. This is not new technology. Um, they're typically used in healthcare you know, by a manager um, when there was an outbreak. Um, they were not and really have not been used on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Um, I agree that that will change as people want to know what is my cleanliness level, and this gives you data to show that. It's not my opinion. When I come in and show you, oh, this is how microfiber works, and then I tell you, doesn't that look clean? I'm like, oh, sure, that looks clean. That's my opinion. Um, this is nobody's opinion. It's an actual uh, data point. Um, so we have a lot of facilities that have started collecting this data, and they monitor it, and it's a very valuable tool um, to, to help maintain. So the piece at the bottom is a slip meter, um, obviously used on the floor. Um, but another data point, and it's showing you that I'm keeping, keeping my floors clean, my slip resistance of which this is measuring, um, gives you a data point that my slip resistance is maintained at this level. And just as a quick example, you can use a bucket and ringer, the old traditional bucket and ringer in your lobby, and you'll get a number of around 100 with these with the slip resistance. And you use microfiber products, uh, with their trio split technology, and you'll cut that number in half. Um, it'll get below 50. So that's a quick example of showing that I'm making my facility safer. Um, slip resistance obviously is a safety factor, but as we're removing more particles, we're also removing the bacteria from the floor, which are becoming airborne as we're walking over them. So um, all of these and, and especially today, I keep saying this, but I can't stress it enough, we're trying to remove bacteria um, because we don't know what's in it. We don't know if it has a bad bacteria or if it's just, uh, I'll say regular bacteria. That's a bad thing to say. <laughs> bacteria is regular, but um, in today's age, uh, we understand that. Okay, so I'm gonna get into um, how to use the microfiber. I mentioned the four-dimensional cleaning. Uh, the great thing about microfiber is you can go vertically and very critical in today's age that we're doing that. We're hitting all those touch points uh, that we talked about earlier um, and really cleaning the areas um, that, that are used on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So um, when we're disinfecting, uh, it, it's really critical to know what you're using and how to use it. So I'm gonna take this off of Stop sharing, okay, so you can see me live now um, in, a, in a bigger picture. Um, so how we use our, our microfiber is that we pre-treat the fiber, okay? So by pre-treating, we're making a, a big uh, box of wet ones, if you will. It's an easy explanation, but if you um, take your bucket and you're putting inside the mops and in here, I just have a, a, a flat mop uh, with, with the pocket backing. Uh, but you put those mops inside the bucket uh, with the microfiber face side down. And in the dilution bucket, we're going to fill this up. I brought a sticker here. This is what's inside the bucket. It'll be easier to look at this way. Um, you're gonna fill this up to the number of product that you're putting in there. So we removed the question of how many ounces, how many gallons of stuff do I put in there? We're just going by number of products. So if you fill that bucket with 12 of these mops, we're gonna look on here and fill it up to this line of 12. And you can see across the top here, it has 18 inch, a uh, 11 inch pad and on the other side are the microfiber cloths. Okay, and so whatever quantity that you fill in here, um, you put a quantity of 12 in that bucket. This is a sticker inside of, of this uh, bucket. Okay, so 
you're just going to fill it up to they need a, a see-through bucket <laughs> um, to this number 12 okay so um, it's going to fill up to about that point um, when that's full up to that number 12 we're going to then take our bucket that has the 12 mops in it and we're going to pour it over the top of them okay it is important that we move across the top um, because we want to saturate these mops um, evenly. One of the nice things that we've done in our product is we have the mesh backing. Okay, the nice thing about that mesh backing is as you pour the solution over the top of this bucket, that solution goes straight through all of the mops. And all of these with the, the mesh backing, that solution is going through all the way to the bottom. So we get a pre-treating um, very quickly. And you may have seen other pre-treated mops that do not have a mesh backing. Um, in those products, you have to flip the bucket over, you put the lid on, flip it over, and you're waiting about 10 minutes um, for the solution to wick into all the microfiber. Um, with the mesh backing, and this is a, a patent that we have on these products, is it does that immediately. Okay, so, very important as you're using product and you put your disinfectant into the bucket. Um, now when you pull this product out, it has the proper amount of disinfectant on it. It's just like you would pull a wet one or baby wipe out of a, a bucket. This is not dripping wet. Um, you're not wringing it out. Okay, this is ready to use and you're going to put it onto your um, the frame. So in this case, I have a, a trowel frame, which we're going to put into that end first. Hey, Dave. Yes. I have a question for you. Yes. Because um, I think maybe customers might ask us, why don't we just, rather than doing that extra step of doing, hey, looking at the mount, why don't we just take it over to our um, dilution system and just fill it up? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that is a great question because a lot of people just want to do that. And they just take, take the bucket full of uh, mops, put everything over it, and hope for the best. Uh, the reason we don't do that is because you don't know how much solution you're putting in the bucket. So we have carefully calculated how much water in solution that you're putting in here it takes to saturate this mop. And that's what these numbers tell you. Okay, so it's a formula, it's a recipe, if you will, that X amount of these and Y amount of solution equals a properly diluted um, uh, product. So that way when we're using the product, it's not leaving too much solution behind and it's not too dry where you're not putting enough down. Um, and this gets back into the dwell time. So it's a, a very good point, Clint, in that uh, we want to make sure this is wet enough to leave solution behind, um, but not too wet where it's just puddling and it's dripping wet. And, and then that, that's not a good product to use because you're just dripping solution all over the place. Um, so it, it is very important that we follow the uh, numbers on here um, for pre-treating the, the products. One other question that comes up as we're pre-treating, um, some people ask, can I combine products? Can I use a, um, an 18 inch pad with an 11 inch pad and put them in the same bucket? Uh, the answer is yes, you can do whatever you want in that bucket. And you're gonna figure out how many products you need for your shift. And so you, you may have 12 of this, three of this and um, a cloth work, worked into the mix. Um, generally speaking, we put those all in separate buckets on your cart, um, but it may be a circumstance where you can't do that and you need to put them all into one. And you can do that, and you may have to play around with the numbers a little bit of how much you're saturating. Um, but the critical thing is that when you pull this out, you don't want it to be dripping wet. And you want it to be completely wet on the whole surface, because uh, if you have dry spots on here, um, you're gonna get too much drag, and you're not gonna leave enough solution behind for your dwell, dwell time, okay? so. That's really why we've uh, come up with this system of how to pre-treat. So does that make sense, uh, Clint? 
Absolutely. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I just want to clarify that for our, our audience. I do see one question here, and maybe we can just address it as we go. Um, Andrew's asking, he says, I, I'm a facility, I'm cleaning up after hundreds of small children, so there's a large amount of visual dirt and soil. Do I need to pre-clean before disinfecting? You want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, that's a great question because uh, you don't know. You don't know what you, you can't see the uh, bacteria. So uh, the quick, quick answer is no. Um, that does get into the type of product you're using, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is a good transition. <laughs> um, you know, there's types of products like this, which you can tell is much different than this one. There's not as much microfiber. If we're using a product like this that doesn't have a lot of nap to it, um, just like carpet, um, we're not going to pick up a lot of um, soil. So in that case, if it's very dirty and we use this type of product that's very thin microfiber, um, th this is going to load up with soil and is not going to pick up all the bacteria uh, because the microfiber is going to be loaded. And if we go back to that uh, visualization of the split fiber, all those little nicks and crannies of the split are full of soil, uh, not bacteria. So the advantage of using a product like this that has get a close up <laughs> um, that has loops in it is we have these what we call debris channels that this is where the soil goes into and <clears throat> excuse me all of those splits that are up and down all of these loops can still pick up the bacteria and leave behind the disinfectant um, so excuse me get a drink so you can pick up soil um, and disinfect at the same time if you're using the proper products, okay? And some people do ask, how do I know that this product uh, needs to be changed out? Um, a lot of it is visual. Um, these, you can see, will load up very quickly. Um, if you have a heavy soil load, um, these ones will hold much more dirt, and you can turn it around and visually see it on there, okay? Um, it, one of the key points of the product is uh, their pocket system. Okay, so there are two pockets on the end, and this frame, maybe I can do this here, or improvise, improvise here. So you put one end of the uh, product in there, um, and set the other end in the other side and push down. And now you have your product on, on the frame, okay? And you go and do your cleaning. When you're done, you hit this, this button and that releases the product, okay? And then you put it into the, uh, the uh, dirty bin. And you can go right back into the bucket and do that process again to get a clean one out, okay? So that's one reason why uh, we're using different buckets for different products is it's more productive if we can have all of these sitting in one bucket for the floor and we're going in and out with the pocket frame and we have a smaller um, bucket like this that fits this size of product so that way we're going into that bucket to get the uh, trial pads as we call this out this is also a pocket system, so we don't have to touch this like a Velcro backed. We just grab this uh, tab and pull this out. And now that product is out with only touching that little tab. So the dirty part on here, we don't have to touch it. We put that back into the, um, the dirty bin and we, we come back, put this into the pocket system and put it, put it through on that side. So when we talk about how we tell if our facilities are clean and use an ATP, we've built a black light into here so I can see that my screen is not very clean. <laughs> um, but this black light is where you can determine um, where dirt is. And if you put it on a white piece of paper, it probably doesn't come through on video very well, but um, the specs that, are, that you see um, in here is a bacteria or a piece of dirt. Okay, so as we're doing this, um, you've probably seen uh, videos or, or people explaining in bathrooms because there's a lot of bacteria there, um, especially around urinals and, and stuff like that. 
Um, so as we're shining the light in those areas, we can see if there's bacteria left. And if there is, then we clean across it again and check it and make sure, okay, now it's clean. So that's something that we're able to check on the spot very quickly um, with, with this product with the black light. Hey, uh, Dave, I have another question I just want to throw out there. Sure. Um, question is, how are microfiber tiles cleaned and do they transfer germs from room to room? Yeah, so great question, um, especially in today's uh, world of understanding cross-contamination. Um, generally speaking, uh, we want to use one product per room. Um, so we're not um, taking whatever was in one room and bringing it into another. Um, to answer the question, does it take um, product bacteria from one room to another? Um, when we're cleaning with, with a cloth, um, that bacteria is in the cloth, you know, it's grabbed onto those fingers, the splits, if you will. Generally speaking, then when we clean another area, it doesn't leave it behind, it still grabs it. Um, but as we have solution in here, and if it's not a, a disinfectant that's killing the bacteria, it can transfer it to another. So if we have a neutral cleaner um, that we're using with this and we clean room A, and we take the same cloth and we go into room B, um, that agent, the neutral cleaner, is going to leave behind what was in the other room mm -hmm. um, because it's it's not killing, it's not disinfecting. Um, but a microfiber is going to hold um, product into it, soils and germs, but you can't guarantee the bacteria is not coming out because of the agent that's in the fiber and transferring to the surface that we're cleaning. Okay, so how we clean microfiber? Um, one of the great things about microfiber hey, is, yes. I do want to stop just real quick there. Um, that question about cross-contamination, that is really the reason why you use one cloth per area too. I mean, so we'd never ever recommend you cleaning um, with a microfiber rag and then going to the next area with that same rag that you, you put it. So you, you need plenty of microfiber to, to complete a shift. So I just want to Point that no, out. And, and that's a great emphasis because you know, we've all seen people that take the cloth in a bucket and they wring it out and they go to the next area, whether it's a room or a different yeah. table in the cafeteria. And we need to stop that practice. Right. Um, in, in today's age, I think it'll help stopping that practice. Um, and a lot of times it's not the cleaner's fault. They're given one bucket and one cloth. Right. And that, that's what you've been doing and that's all you have. So the mindset does need to change in the facilities to know we need to use one product per area and change that product out. Right. Um, and get and out of the habit care. of, of going back they've been to doing that for a while, but in a lot of other sectors, that's not the way it's been done. Right. So correct. In healthcare, that's not done that way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely correct. Um, in the, the best illustration is a bucket ringer. You know, we use that one bucket for a large area and we keep going back to the same reservoir of solution right. that has the same dirt in it from that, that area over there. Um, and again, in healthcare, there's guidelines to change the bucket every so many rooms. Um, but we've all seen buckets in restaurants and other places where we can't believe we're eating in that restaurant <laughs> when we see that bucket. <laughs> you had an associate um, that used to call it a, um, what was it? A UTS, which stood for urine transfer system. <laughs> That's what they called the mop bucket, right? Exactly. I've, I've heard urine redistribution system. <laughs> um, yeah, because it, it is gross. I mean, it, when you think about they went in a bathroom with a bucket and then they're coming out in the dining area yeah. with the same bucket. Um, and you are transferring what was in one room to another because right. you're going back to the same reservoir. Right. The advantage of pre-treating is we're using one product, we're cleaning that room, and then we're putting that into the soil um, bin. And so we're that, getting... that, that question that was also on there, how do you clean microfiber for those who... who... Yeah, so um, the easy thing on microfiber is you want to make sure they're in a, a washer that is rinsing very well um, and they have plenty of room to move around. They need to agitate in excess water. Those little fingers, if you will, 
cannot hold when they're oversaturated. Um, so it, that's why we wanted to make sure they're in a, a washer and you're not jamming 300 um, things in there when you should only have 100, um, depending on your size of washer. It depends, obviously, quantity. Um, so you oversaturate them with the water and they're agitated. And the key thing is you just do not want to use fabric softener um, or bleach. Um, fabric softener is the worst for microfiber. It has the opposite attraction to the charge in the fiber because when we split it, it does create electrostatic charge, kind of like you rub a balloon on your head. Clint, you can't do this as much as I can. <laughs> um, but your hair stands up. Same type of thing is that you get electrostatic charge. A fabric softener is the opposite. Um, so that fabric softener, liquid fabric softener, will clump up in the microfiber. Mm -hmm. And a great explanation is if you put one of these in your dryer with anything, your jeans and, and clothes, and a bounce sheet, 100% uh, of the time you'll find the bounce sheet in this. Okay, so if you ever want to find that sheet, not in your uh, bed sheets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, microfiber. Throw one microfiber in there, I guarantee you it will be wrapped around there in a little ball. Okay, you that just shows the a whole new market for microfiber. Yeah, see, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, so th that's it's very easy from cleaning. Just make sure you have enough rinse um, in the product and, and it will come clean. And one other thing is don't wash microfiber just with microfiber, never with cotton or... Yeah. Well, and that's a great point because microfiber attracts so many things. So if you wash it with cotton, we all know that uh, cotton uh, lints, as we see in the lint traps. Um, so if you have cotton in with microfiber, this is going to come out with lint in it um, because it's attracting those things just like it is on the floor. Um, so you don't want to uh, mix uh, microfiber with other materials. And that's a good point. Hey, Dave, I have two things. Um, I have one question, and then I just want to kind of look at the time. We, it's 948, so we should probably be wrapping up here in about 10 minutes for all of you participants. But the one question, I'm just going to read this one. Someone asked, um, hey, this is new to me, but why would you use a trowel versus a cloth? Um, maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a great question. Um, because cloths and, and rags, different types of before microfiber have been around forever. Mm -hmm. um, the, the advantage of a trowel over a cloth is when we have more material um, to pick up, um, much more microfiber um, than is on this type of product. Um, but probably the best advantage of a trowel is we get a big flat surface and we get even pressure. Okay, so a, as we're, we're cleaning, we get this whole flat surface that's doing the cleaning. Um, on the back is flexible. Um, so if we are going going across a, a sink or something, you know, we can hit the, the curved surfaces. Where if we're on a microfiber cloth, we generally have our touch points from our fingers that, that are on top of the cloth or your palm where you just have this little area of a pressure point on a surface. So we're getting much more consistent results using this, and we don't have to touch the product. You know, we have a clean handle, and we're going across it. You don't have to put your fingers onto a, a product with chemical on it, and as you're doing the cleaning with dirty stuff on it, bacteria and, and soil. So that's the biggest ad advantage. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, so any other questions that have come out or other things you want to cover, Clint? Nope. I think we can move on, and but we should probably be kind of wrapping it up. Yeah. So um, in summary of microfiber is you're going to clean up much more bacteria. You're going to get the bacteria out of the surfaces. Um, again, because of the splits in the fiber, um, this fiber is going to remove 99.9% .9 of bacteria just by itself. When you couple that up with your disinfectants and you have a good log reduction in that disinfectant, you're going to then kill the bacteria. So in the virus era that we are now, that viruses are spreading very quickly, uh, we want to make sure we're removing them, not moving them around. So make sure you know the difference of cleaning versus disinfecting. They go together, um, as one qu question asked. You know, we do need to clean. 
and disinfects. And it's a critical part in today's age because we don't know where the viruses are. So we have to assume everything has viruses on it. So as you guys are out there doing the cleaning, um, make sure that you're using good products and you're using a microfiber that's removing the bacteria. And again, the disinfectant that goes with it. Um, those two together are, are really gonna make a big difference of making facilities clean and staying clean because we're, we're all gonna come back up out of this and buildings are gonna start opening and people are gonna be a little freaked out of, can I touch that? Do I go over here? And as a cleaning professional, it's our job to really portray you're in a clean facility. And, and so to make sure you're using the right practices and the right products is a critical piece in, in educating them. And it's a great Clint that you're doing these education uh, pieces um, because this is at the forefront now. People want to know what is clean and, and do I have a clean facility? So if you go through these products and, and you're using the right stuff, um, you're going to have a clean facility and, and we'll, we'll all be in a healthier facility then. Yeah, yeah. No. Dave, I, I really appreciate you being on here and, and, and just Sorry. providing education and that's our goal. Um, if you, if you want to take a, a, a minute or two just to talk about why CPI versus even other microfiber, I think that would be appropriate. Um, sure. At, yeah, it, it's CPI has been in microfiber almost 20 years now, and, and I've been in microfiber uh, close to 30 as, as I worked for some European companies a long time ago. <laughs> um, in, and so I've seen microfiber go through the stages that it has, um, particularly in the CPI microfiber. Um, we have a patented system. Um, our fibers split three times. Um, other people split theirs once. Um, the easiest way to do that is to, um, to see the difference. It's just to feel the fiber. And when you, this is hard to do on a video, <laughs> but um, when you have one of these in front of you, <laughs> Um, and you feel that, and you feel it picking at the pores of your skin, that's when you know it has more splits to it. If you go into a retail store and you pick up a cloth on, on the, the counter, a, a typical cloth like this, and you rub your hand across it and it feels more smooth, that's showing you that it doesn't have as many splits. Mm -hmm. And how we pick up more bacteria are those splits is you need to get those prickly things, if you will, that get into the pores of the surface that you're cleaning. Otherwise, you're just spreading around the agent and you're not removing the soil. You're just relying on the disinfectant to kill what's there. And as we talked about, there's always bacteria left. Can't kill 100%. So we wanna have the best chance of removing the bacteria. And if we're using a, a trio split technology, in this product, in the proper disinfectant, um, you're going to have great results. So a big part of what separates CPI is training. And again, this is a little bit different um, via video. Uh, when we're back to normal, we'll be in front of uh, you guys and we can do these live and really show you how it works. Um, we come to your facility and do it in person. Um, and, and that's what Clint's team does as well is we train them, they become the microfiber experts and already are in many cases. Um, so it's really the big separating point is the product and how to use it is we really want to educate, educate people on that. Yeah, we, we preach that at Cade, product plus processes equal to outcome, right? Yeah. So we talked about this last week, but you could have the exact right product, but if you're not using it right, it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. You know, if you were dipping it back into something and then going to the next room and doing it again, you could have CPI microfiber, but it's not getting the job that you want to get done. Yeah. Um, on the flip side, you could be doing these practices just right, but if it's not the right product, it's just not going to do the job. So it's so important to, to mesh those two together. So um, yeah. I do see a few more questions that popped up here. Maybe we can answer those um, and then we can, we can finish up here. Um, oh. This is just um, one of our guys was saying one thing to mention is with CPI versus the competition is the amount of wash cycles. Um, I know you're, we're going to go through some slides on that, but 
we've, we've spent more time on training, but maybe just address yeah. that. Yeah, uh, great point is uh, we guarantee our product for 1,000 uh, washings. Um, in How do we design. make good on that guarantee? I mean, do we have to put a little marker on it? They, they, they are coded in, inside, but uh, we, we don't get product back because they're designed to last a lot longer than that. And how we do that is one mesh material and they're designed to filter out much easier in the wash cycle, um, meaning you're not leaving chemical in the product that deteriorates um, the stitching and the makeup. Um, all of our products are extra stitched. You know, we double stitch them. We put material behind the stitching so we're not just stitching to a one material. Helps it last longer. Uh, we believe that you're investing a lot of money in cleaning products and we want them to last longer. Um, so it's a critical part of what we do um, is having high quality products. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do see a couple more, maybe more directed at me. Um, question on, somebody asked about how do you clean carpet, um, getting germs out of carpet. Um, that's maybe a whole nother um, conversation, not necessarily with microfiber, but do you have any thoughts on that, um, Dave, Dave at all? Yeah, you know, you, you can use um, uh, microfiber bonnets on carpet okay. um, to, to help extract things out of them. Um, a lot of carpet is with a chemical um, because obviously you'll get oh, a lot better dwell time in carpet because it's already a fiber. Um, but removing it with an extractor um, in, in having a good extractor that is removing the products, um, that's very helpful. Um, mostly microfiber bonnets are used for spot cleaning or, or smaller areas right. or a, a light duty cleaning, which you're not leaving a lot of solution behind for dwell time. Yeah. Um, so if you're really wanting to kill bacteria, um, I think you need to get more into extraction. Like a carpet with sanitizer. A chemical, yeah. Absolutely, yep. Um, okay, um, I, I see some, some questions on pricing. Is it on our website? Um, yes, if you already have a login, um, you can log in. And a lot of this stuff is under, um, if you go to our front page, there's a little link that says microfiber for use against um, um, COVID-19, I think is how we have it listed. But it's, it's just, it'll have a lot of this microfiber on there so you can see pricing on that. Um, or you can just contact me. Um, I do want to put in a little plug for um, next week. We're going to have a, a, another guy on the line um, with Triple S, Dan Wagner. And so today we've talked about, last week we talked about disinfecting, this week we've talked about cleaning. Um, and we've also talked about how do we measure clean with the ATP. So if anyone has questions on that pricing, we can help. I think I saw another question on price. Um, I can talk with people individually on that. Um, but next week, we're going to have Dan talking about a, a mobile app tool, how to document that. Um, and, and it's a mobile tool that you can take pictures. Um, and as we come out of this thing, like I said, with this whole COVID-19 crisis, it's going to be critical for folks to be able to, to show documentation. Because even me, as, like I said, as a consumer, and I walk into a restaurant, I want to know what are they doing here. And so if, if that stuff can be documented, um, and actually um, a place where other people can access it, that's gonna be a huge, huge win. So that's something we're gonna talk about next week. Just wanna put, put a little plug in. Um, Dave, you have anything else that you wanna add before we, we cut this thing off? No, I, th I think it's one, thank you for everyone joining. You know, that, that shows the care that you have for uh, learning more. Um, we're all learning uh, through this situation, but in the cleaning world, thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, you're a critical part to, uh, flattening the curve, if you will. Yep. So thank you. Hey, thanks to all. Have yourself um, a, a great uh, Thursday and we will um, hopefully see some of you guys next week. All right. Thanks everyone. Stay healthy. <laughs>